Hey everybody, this is uh, part three of YXZ1000 build for my son. Uh, on the last video, I told you I was done with disassembly, but I just spent like another hour taking apart more stuff. Um, I went ahead and removed that front sway bar that I talked about. Um, I forgot to get the seat belts out, so they're out now. I went ahead and disassembled some more of this rear plastic. These are just little panels that easily clip on and off. Um, Plus there was an additional panel for like the intake for the GYTR turbo uh, in there. Uh, and then I also uh, removed the rear differential um, and uh, you know, the, the bracketing and things like that that are necessary for the rear differential to get it out, uh, as well as the rear park and brake caliper. That's all pretty easy and pretty self-explanatory to, to take out. Uh, the reason I went ahead and did that is I'm going to replace the drive shaft. Uh, y all years of the YXZ1000 have a relatively weak drive shaft. Um, so I actually have two of them here. These are both, uh, one is from Brooklyn's car and then one is from this car now. And, and I'm going to send these off to, um, there's a guy named Alan Anderson. His business is called Uncle Al's automotive i believe and uh he's in oregon and if you own a yxz 1000 you need to know this guy um he basically specializes in all things yamaha yxz 1000 uh as well as i don't know what else he does at his shop i guess they do other automotive work and whatnot but um anyways he has an outstanding fix it's only um i don't know it's a fraction of the price but it's it's much less expensive than buying an aftermarket um, uh, an aftermarket drive shaft or anything, but essentially, if you send them your Yamaha drive shaft, your YXZ drive shaft, before you break it, um, it's cheaper and easier uh, for for him to uh, basically modify these welds. These welds are prone to to breaking; uh, they're just weak and they're, they they don't penetrate very well and whatever. So he um, he takes your drive shaft and he does something to it, grinds it down, re-welds it uh, much much better, much more thorough. So I'm gonna go ahead and send them both of these drive shafts. I don't plan on using them both, but um, it, it's just, uh, it's too cheap and easy to have him do that while, while, while it's out. So anyways, I'm gonna send those things to him as well. Um, should get it back, I don't know. He's usually pretty quick, it doesn't take that long. And like I say, it's very reasonable uh, in terms of price compared to something like the Avenger drive line, which is like $600 or something like that. So I think retail is even higher than that. You can normally, sometimes they have them on sale for $600. So uh, anyways, uh, getting to some assembly now, the first thing I think I'm gonna tackle is the steering system for uh, the Yamaha YXZ1000. Um, all years, all models, I think, have the same steering. Um, I don't think there's any difference in the steering between the SS models or like the 19 and newer models. Um, I didn't originally do this steering rack on my first two YXZ builds and I added it later to Brooklyn's uh, SS. And it it feels amazing. Um, it's it's a quite a bit more responsive. You get, you get better just feel. You have a better idea of what the front wheels are doing uh, when you're steering your car uh, with this uh, steering rack. Plus, it is just way stronger, everything about it. It's an outstanding product, uh, feels great. They have another model. This is just a one-to-one, -one, basically a stock replacement, but it's a, it's a very nice, beefy um, billet piece and uh, real precise and uh, as well as their tie rods. Of course, these are extended to fit uh, uh, or to work with the, the NXS Designs long travel kit. Um, and what's also cool, something that's great that Weller does, if you buy the rack and their tie rods, they'll, they'll assemble these things for you. So this part in here where the, where the cleats meet the other end of the tie rod and, and inside the boot and the clamp and all that, that takes a little bit of time and, and you got to do that right uh you, you, these are things that that are that need to be need to be done w with some precision because of um you know it's very risky we're talking about the steering of your of your car so um if you're ever going fast and 
you've lost a tie rod or, or, or one of these comes loose or something in here goes wrong, you're, you're at a lot of risk. Um, so it, it, I just feel better. I have a lot more peace of mind knowing that they have assembled this and torqued it to spec and all those things. So, so it's nice that they do some pre-assembly, some professional pre-assembly for you whenever you buy, you know, like a combination of their parts. So it's actually two different models uh, or two different, I guess, item numbers from them. Uh, the, the billet steering rack is one and then it comes with, you know, with its hardware and then the tie rod, which these are extended again to match my uh, long travel. Uh, you know, so these ends in that photograph, those are already installed and and properly fastened. I assume there's Loctite and things like that. All of that is already done inside this rack when you buy them together like that. So that's nice. The shipping is outstanding. Uh, all their packaging is really, really well done and just... You know, they're just a good organized professional shop um, so many times we deal with kind of kind of out of the garage type shops that make some of these custom parts and you get you get poor packaging missing bolts and stuff like that with some of these other companies and you just don't have that type of problem with Weller it's they're 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 just I've been to their facility several times and they have a um, a great process production line things like that for their assembly and their shipping and and um, uh, things like that. And they usually have a lot of their stuff that they make in house. They they have a lot of it in in stock. And um, then they're they also sell many other companies, other brands as well. So so a third part that I've got here for the steering is this uh, steering rack support plate. This is the thing I was going on about in the last video, where you knock off the little factory nuts that are tack welded to that thin piece of metal um so uh and, and in order and, and the reason you do that is is you're you're putting in this this nice back plate that's that's of course stronger but it has more clamping force and uh weller includes longer fasteners so i'm actually not going to use these fasteners uh that came with the steering rack as a stock replacement because they include these others that are slightly longer oh actually you know what they're the same length i guess they're the same it doesn't matter so anyways you get i guess redundant fasteners if you get them like this but if you buy the back plate you get the fasteners if you buy the rack you get the fasteners either way and they also don't have to but they also include this uh smaller hex head or i guess that's an allen head nut bolt um and that's from the steering shaft from your steering wheel that comes down um it 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 slides over this and then it has a little little clamp and the bolt just passes through this groove to secure it um and you can use your factory one but there's a high likelihood that your factory one gets gets galled a little bit or or, or kind of marked up even just by removing it one time to slide it out i think this one did pretty good um, whenever I took it out, I just, I threaded it right back in. Um, um, and it, and it seemed to do fine, but, um, like on Brooklyn's car last year, it, it just messed it up right out of the, just, just taking it out like that, uh, messed up the bolts. So Weller, it, it's nice that they, and they have experience in these things and they know that that one little bolt can ruin your whole install. And so they include you one in your kit for you just in case you need it. And in my experience, I guess it's a 50, 50 chance that you need it. Um, so, so again, kind of nice and thorough. Um, they have great printed instructions, uh, that are available or, or that come in the box with all of their parts. You don't have to go online and fish around for a while or send an email and, you know, all of those things to, um, to track down some sort of, uh, instructions that you might need. Um, they, all of that is included in the box, which is really nice. There's uh, torque specs. It tells you where to use Loctite. It tells you, you know, all, it's, it's pretty precise on all of these things. Um, I've, I think I've had maybe one question ever where I had to call Kyle um, the next day on something after building that entire car uh, for, for quite a bit. I, I forget what it was, but last year there was one thing I was like a little vague on 
and I called Kyle about it. And of course he knew right off the top of his head, but um, very thorough instructions and uh, the customer service and the people down at Weller are just outstanding. All of them are. And many times when you call, the owners answer the phone. Not always. They have uh, several people that answer the phone, but um, like th th it's it's not unusual for for Corey or Jason to to be on the phone, and they'll help you walk right through whatever your parts uh, question is, or if you got a sales question or a technical question. They they've turned these wrenches, and if they're not out on the track racing, they're normally there at the at the shop working. Um, and uh, so it's just nice to uh, to have that kind of depth, I think, in their service. Outstanding customer service, no doubt about it. Um, so that's <laughs> that's kind of my Weller commercial for the steering rack as we start getting into these parts. Uh, I'm going to um, pause the video and I'm going to go kind of start putting some of these parts in and I will resume uh, some of the steering rack install. Okay, so I've got the steering rack basically just laying in the in the front, and um, it's important to center the rack. So I've got the steering wheel centered, um, and then I've got you know steering wheel straight, which is this bar that comes down to this U joint, um, and then what what um, what I've done is over there on the workbench, I moved this, uh, you can manually move this back and forth to measure center. And um, I, I, what I've done is just put a little mark. Uh, you can see right here, I've got a mark for what center. And as you see, let me see if I can focus, there we go. As you move the rack back and forth, that spins. So I've got it marked with a fat white pencil. It's, it's enough for me to get within a tooth or so. But uh, what we gotta do now is while, while the rack is loose, you have to slide this U-joint over that um, first because once, once the rack is bolted on, you don't really have th th this, this, this U-joint in this uh, steering rod or shaft steering shaft doesn't have the um, flexibility to slide over that spline shaft so uh, i'm going to get that slid over there first and then um, i'll at least kind of start the threads on actually mounting the rack okay so i have the rack in there i have this back plate in place um, and I have the U-joint attached. All the bolts are kind of finger tight, uh, just kind of loose in there. Uh, no Loctite or anything yet. And I tried to make sure the rack stayed centered with my little mark that I have in there and that the steering wheel stayed centered. So what I do to kind of be a little more thorough here, kind of a test is once it's all, like I say, it's just kind of temporarily finger tight in there. Now I, I spin the wheel lock to lock. And if it locks at the same spot, so what is that? It's not quite a full turn. It's like a little more than three quarters of a turn. So if it locks at the same spot each way, so let's see, so that is about I guess it's pointing up at, uh, what would you call that? One and a half o'clock, 1.30? <laughs> and then here, yeah, I'm, I'm way off somewhere. So um, I am going to loosen it and find my center point of where I'm at, but it looks like I'm a few teeth off on that U-joint. Okay. I moved it over a tooth or two. I didn't really notice for sure. Um, so now I'm um, basically going to turn the wheel each way. So that went from 12 o'clock. So it stops at, looks like it's exactly three quarters of a rotation. 
so that's center and then yeah three so there's a little play because those are just finger tight bolts you know like like you can feel it kind of wiggle still but it's three quarters each way and back to center so i'm going to tighten these up and um so the way i do this now is it's got those four larger allen bolts i have this handy dandy little um it's just it's a it's a socket that has a round head and you can't like use an impact or torque these down real tight with this type of head because it might break at that narrow spot but it does allow you to get in at some of these funny angles and this plate is um this plate is kind of at an angle it's not it's not square with the chassis here the, the plate kind of comes out and has a little little space to it under under the bottom and uh yeah you can see this here and so what what happens is it, it kind of plays tricks on you and it's hard to get these bolts in straight threaded through this back plate um and everything without stripping them out um or or cross threading them not stripping them but but cross threading them uh, so over here on brooklyn's that i did last year the um i got one of these cross threaded and i just went ahead and sent her in I, I couldn't i it was too late i couldn't get it out i already had red loctite on it so i um <laughs> One of these is cross-threaded, and if I ever have to take this rack off, it's going to be a serious problem. But um, um, over here on Carter's car, I'm going to try not to do that. So here's the back of Brooklyn's. You see that plate um, with those four bolts. So I'm going to... Uh, the way I do this, so is, is I, I actually put all four bolts in, run them all the way in, and then I take them out one at a time and put red Loctite on them. Um, that way I kind of verify that it stays clamped and it's in the right spot because the, the holes that, that these pass through, um, when they pass through this factory plate, this thin metal plate, they have a little slack in them, not much, but a little bit. So what I like to do is kind of clamp it centered, keep it right where it needs to be make sure all of my bolts are lined up and not cross-threaded and go straight through. And then, um, and then I pull out one at a time, put red Loctite on it and send it back in um, and torque it to spec. So I will um, pause the video again. I'm gonna do that. And then I will tell you the torque values uh, off of the Weller instructions uh, once I get that in. All right, so I got the rack in, I got all the bolts in, aligned, every, everything looks and feels good. So um, I'm looking at the instructions here, I was looking for the uh, the torque values for these bolts and I found it here. And I thought it was kind of funny because I looked through and the instructions for the rack is, I guess, 30 steps total and I don't even have to start until step number 20 because Weller did the pre-assembly uh, of the clevises and, and all the boots work and everything like that that's ahead of it. So they did the first 19 steps of assembly, which includes some of these pretty, um, you know, intricate details in there. Uh, they did all that for us, so that's really nice. I just I just can't go on and on a, 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 a enough about how convenient that is, um, and I know it's right. You know, I don't have to worry about it. So, anyway, so starting on uh, step twenty, uh, it's basically just showing us how to reassemble the, or, or or reinstall the new rack. Um, so it says eighteen foot pounds uh, and using red Loctite for that's the little U-joint bolt. So I've got my handy torque wrench and this is a six millimeter uh, Allen head. So I'm going to uh, pull this out a little bit, put some red Loctite on it and um, 
torque it down. All right, so I pulled it out about halfway, uh, put, a, put a drop of, uh, a couple drops of red Loctite on it, so now I'm just torquing it back down. Um, using my torque wrench set to 18 foot-pounds per the instructions. And um, I'm trying to do this one-handed here, holding an iPhone. That's it for that one. So I pulled out the first, uh, that's the upper right corner um, mounting bolt. And I'm putting the drop of red Loctite on. And uh, you have to put it on the very tip because in that steering rack, the threads aren't until, I mean, it's like an inch in um, because the billet rack and the mounting plate is so thick first and then the nut isn't until the last, you know, I don't know, four or five threads, however thick that net is, nut is. So you got to put the Loctite on the very tip of your bolt. Um, yeah. And then the torque value, this is an eight millimeter Allen head and the torque value is 45 foot-pounds. And uh, so let me get that going. I need to get a tripod or something if I'm gonna keep doing this one-handed. Okay, uh, and something else I'll mention is I noticed that this, um, so, so originally whenever I unpackaged all these things, the steering rack came with its own set of bolts and then that back plate came with its own set of bolts. And um, I noticed while I was assembling this, the bolts that come with the the steering rack itself are a finer pitch thread. Uh, I, I assume because they fit the factory nuts that are just tack welded on the back. So when you buy the Weller back plate, it includes other eight millimeter Allen bolts that are the same length, but it's a different th thread pitch to fit these nuts that are on the back. <laughs> these nuts that are on the back plate. Um, so I guess they have a reason to use that thread pitch. I guess they like it better. Maybe it's stronger, it grips, I don't know. But um, so I tried to thread some of these other bolts uh, first and it wasn't quite grabbing right. So I had to uh, look into it and I found out that it is a, actually different, a different thread pitch bolt if you add the back plate to your steering rack. Um, that's it. So I'm going to pull out these other three, one at a time, put a drop of uh, red Loctite, and then torque them all back down to spec. And that's it for this series.